It's a categorical attribute. So this is how you do binning to convert a numerical to a categorical attribute. Okay, we've looked at all the pieces. Just time to put the pieces together. We take an example from this book here, Data Mining for Business Intelligence, Concepts, Techniques, and Applications in Microsoft Excel. We take this example from there, where they just consider, again, a simple example of uh, a data set in which you've got income of uh, some, people, some families, the lot size of their homes, and whether or not they own a, 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 mower, a riding mower, lawn mower. Again, the idea is given a new person, you want to predict whether they'll buy the riding mower or not. Okay, so there are two attributes. Again, a very simplistic assumption just for exposition. So first thing we do, of course, is to normalize the data. So we normalize the predictors, and therefore, as you can see here, the two predictors were somewhat incommensurate. Incomes were much higher than uh, the lot sizes. Even though incomes were have been shown in thousands of dollars, it's still much higher than the lot sizes, so clearly it'll tend to dominate. So we normalize the incomes and the lot sizes, and now we see that both are uh, commensurate. Okay, so that's step number one. So then what we do is we have to partition the data. Now, KNN requires not two partitions, but it requires three partitions. In fact, it requires two partitions just for building the model. So we'll call the first partition as training A, the first training partition. We'll consider this, call the second partition as training B. This is what we'll do uh, consistently. And so these two partitions will be used for actually building the model. And the third partition is going to be used just to test the model. We'll put away the data, not use it at all in model building. Once we've got a model, which we believe is acceptable, then we'll run it on the test data and see if it's the model is still acceptable. If so, we'll use the model. Otherwise, we'll have to do something else. Okay. So uh, typically, when you make three partitions, you'll probably do a 60, 20, 20 kind of a split. Could be 17, 15, 15. It depends on how much data you have, but you should have a reasonable amount of data in uh, the three partitions. The biggest one is going to be the training A partition. And the training B and the test partitions will be somewhat similar in size. There's no hard and fast rule here. Okay, so we've got the training A partition and we've got the training B partition. Now we're looking at how exactly the KNN procedure works. Okay, so the training A partition is what we'll use as kind of the base. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll just pick a value for K. Typically, what we'll do is we'll select the values for K from starting from 1 up to close to 10 okay going beyond that is is going too far too much too many neighbors to be considered we won't do that and now given that we have only two classes in this particular problem we have only two classes owner non owner right so what we'll try and do is to avoid even numbered values for k because that can result in ties so in this example we'll try try k values 1 3 5 7 and 9 let's say and then we'll go by the majority case. So here we just show you an example of how things are going to work for k equals 3. So with k equals 3, what we are going to do is we are going to consider every case in the training B partition and then find its three nearest neighbors in the training A partition and classify the case accordingly. Right? So let's take a look at what happens for the first case. For the first case, that case, the closest neighbor happens to be this, which is a non-owner. The next closest neighbor also happens to be a non-owner. And the final closest neighbor also happens to be a non-owner. Now, how did we calculate the neighbors? Well, based on the distance. So what we did was we took this case and calculated its distance to each of the cases in the training A partition. Okay, we can calculate the distance. It's xy coordinates here, xy coordinates here. We can apply the Pythagorean formula and calculate the distance. So presumably that process was done for all the cases and we found that these were the three closest neighbors. Why three? Because our k is three. Okay, if we had done k equals one, then we would have to worry only about one neighbor. 
okay no matter what we see that all the neighbors are non owners so that is majority and therefore for this particular case k equals 3 will predict that this person will be a non owner which makes sense right if you look at the standardized value this person is below average in income and below average in lot size why would they want a riding mower so it seems likely that they would be a non owner okay so what we this just shows you the illustration of one calculation so what you're going to do is for every case of the training b partition you're going to do the same process and find out what the prediction is these are the actual values from the historical data you're going to find the prediction based on the k on k equals 3 okay and like i said earlier you're going to repeat this process for k equals 1 find the predictions k equals 3 find the predictions k equals 5 find the predictions 7 9 find the predictions okay so for every single case you find all the predictions then you will calculate the error matrix for each value of k okay so let's consider k equals 1 we didn't do it but if we had done it let us say that our training b partition consisted of 50 cases not the small number that is shown here again hypothetical if it consisted of 50 cases then you can see what the model did for every case you know what the actual ownership is and you know what the model predicted so based on that you can create this matrix you can say totally let's say there were 15 owners by looking at this you can find that out if there were 50 cases here we've got a small number so you may have had 15 owners out of which the model k equals 1 predicted 10 of them to be actually owners it predicted 10 out of the 15 correctly and it predicted 5 of the actual owners incorrectly it predicted them as non-owners okay so it was wrong on five cases and on the issue of non-owners let's say there were 35 non-owners in the training.b partition let's say that k equals 1 said that five of these non-owners are actually owners that is it made a mistake it misclassified non-owners five non-owners as owners but it correctly classified 30 non-owners as non-owners okay this is what is called as the error matrix or the classification confusion matrix okay so looking at this matrix we can say that 10 owners were correctly classified as owners 30 non-owners were also correctly classified as non-owners but five of each were classified incorrectly right so of the total of 50 40 cases were correctly classified and 10 cases were incorrectly classified okay so that gives you a correctness performance of 80 percent 40 out of 50 and hypothetically let's say we did the same thing for k equals 3 and it turned out that from 10 the number of errors reduced to 7 it correct class correctly classified 12 of the owners and correctly classified 31 of the non owners okay so slightly better performance now when we tried k equals 5 maybe we find that it made 12 mistakes okay so if you continued k equals 7 k equals 9 etc then we would get similar classification confusion matrices so we look at all of them and choose the matrix that we like most in this hypothetical example this matrix for k equals 3 gives the least number of errors that is it gives us the best performance and therefore we'll say okay k equals 3 seems to be the best we'll use k equals 3 okay but of course k equals 3 we got only from the training partition we don't know how it's going to perform on independent data which is sitting in the test partition so now we take k equals 3 go to the test partition and do the same thing that we did for k equals 3 on the training b partition so instead of training b we'll use now the test partition and for every case of the test partition we'll find its three nearest neighbors why three because k equals 3 turned out to be our best performer right so we'll do that and then arrive at the classifications again and then we'll get the error matrix just like we did for the training partition training b partition we'll get it for the test partition and then we'll see if the performance we get there is still good then we can say okay k equals 3 works well for this particular problem so going forward 
Whenever we get a new case, we'll use k equals 3 and classify that case. Just like we, the example we showed for training B. Okay, so that's really how the KNN method works. Let's now summarize the whole process. So first we normalize all the predictor attributes. Then we partition the data into three partitions, training A, training B, and test. And noting that we need to have sufficient number of cases in each partition. You know, some examples would be 70, 15, 15, 60, 20, 20, or 50, 25, 25. These are all good ways of dividing the data, but we want to make sure that we have a good number of cases in the training A partition and reasonable numbers in the training B and the test partitions. You don't want to have a huge training A partition and minuscule B and test partitions. At the same time, you don't want to have too few cases in training A because training A contains the, the set against which we match. So having partitioned the data, our next job is to try several k values on the training.b partition, the training b partition. Okay. Now, if you have only two cases, two classes in your target attribute, then it might be a good idea not to try even numbered values of k because you might get a tie between the classes and you won't be able to decide. So you might try odd numbered values of k like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Typically, you try k values less than 10. So you do that. And for every value of k, as we have just demonstrated, you can create an error matrix or a classification confusion matrix. And that will tell you the performance of that value of k, performance of the model. That is, uh, for each class, it's going to tell you uh, how many, it, what percentage it gets right and what percentage it gets wrong. And also for the overall cases, what proportion it gets correct and wrong. So based on that, you can select a model select a value of k. So now you have applied different values of k and selected a value of k based on your performance preferences. So now you've built the model, but of course you have to test the model on independent data, right? Data that was not used in model building. And where's that data? That is sitting in our test partition. So we now apply this chosen value of k on the test partition, and then we see if the model performance is still acceptable, right? If the model performance on the training partition for none of the k values was reasonable, provided us any benefit, then we'll say, well, this is useless. So we found a good value of k, and then we are applying on the test partition and seeing if things still hold up. So that is the next step, apply it on the test partition. If all is well, use the model, otherwise, try some other technique.